Hello friends, welcome to CEC Live Lectures. Dear friends, today in this session we are going to continue further. We are uh, discussing uh, alternatives of globalization. This is the topic of discussion in our previous past also and as promised here we are again for you. Friends, we are again going to talk on, on alternatives of globalization and uh, basically we are going to talk on some of the concepts such as the World Social Forum, Global Justice Movement, Tomorrow Begins Today and many other. And for the discussion on the topic, we have with us in our studios Dr. Sujit Thakur. Dr. Sujit Thakur is an assistant professor and he is uh, teaching in the Department of uh, Political Science, the Al Singh College, University of Delhi. Dr. Sujit Thakur uh, is a prolific professor who believes in uh, giving his best to the students by making the subject easier. So let's welcome our guest, Dr. Sujit Thakur, and let's try to understand more and more about alternatives of globalization. Hello, sir. Welcome. Thank you, Gitika. Namaskar, viewers. जैसा कि आप जानते हैं कि हम लोग पिछले लेक्चर में ऑलरेडी इस बात का डिस्कशन कर रहे थे कि अल्टरनेटिव पर्सपेक्टिव ऑफ ग्लोबलाइजेशन में कौन कौन से ऐसे आयाम हैं जो बदलती हुई वैश्विक राजनीति में एक नए दिशा की ओर ले जा रहा है जिसके तहत जब हम चर्चा कर रहे थे तो हमने देखा कि उन्नीस के बाद एक नई प्रकार की आर्थिक और राजनीतिक सोच वैश्विक स्तर पर इमर्ज कर रहा था या ये कहें कि जिसे हमने वाशिंगटन कंसिस एजेंडा के रूप में आपके सामने बार बार कहा कि 90s के बाद दो तरह के राजनीतिक और आर्थिक सोच आए एक राजनीतिक और आर्थिक सोच यह आया कि लिबरलिज्म जो उदारवादी व्यवस्था है उदारवादी पूंजी पूंजीवादी व्यवस्था जो है वही वैश्विक राजनीति को एक एक सही दिशा में ले जा सकती है दूसरी सोच जो ये आई कि यदि वैश्विक राजनीतिक आर्थिक व्यवस्था को सही ढंग से चलना है तो जो फिजिकल पॉलिसी है जो टैक्सेशन का जो प्रावधान है जो सोशल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर की जो पॉलिसी है जो करेंसी रेट एक्सचेंज है इस सब पर जो वाशिंगटन कंसेस एजेंडा के तहत जो 10 कमांड कमांडमेंट जो किया गया था जो वर्ल्ड बैंक के स्टाफ थे जॉन विलियमसन जो नाइनटीन एटी में उन्होंने अपनी एक रिपोर्ट रखी थी और उसके बाद सोवियत संघ के विघटन के बाद यह तय कर लिया गया कि यह टेन कमांडमेंट जो होगा यही आगे आने वाली वैश्विक राजनीति का मार्गदर्शक होगा उसके विरुद्ध जो एक प्रकार की राजनीतिक और आर्थिक सोच का उद्भव हुआ उस सोच को हम अल्टरनेटिव ग्लोबलाइजेशन या एंटी ग्लोबलाइजेशन या क्रिटिक ऑफ ग्लोबलाइजेशन या ग्लोबल जस्टिस मूवमेंट के रूप में समझने का प्रयास करते हैं और इसी विषय को हमने पिछले लेक्चर्स में विस्तृत रूप से चर्चा किया था जिसमें हमने सिएटल कॉन्फ्रेंस की चर्चा की थी हमने जियोना कॉन्फ्रेंस की चर्चा की थी हमने वाशिंगटन डीसी में जो सम्मेलन हुआ था उसकी चर्चा की थी हमने प्रेग में जो सम्मेलन हुआ था उसकी चर्चा की थी और किस प्रकार से विभिन्न प्रकार के जो ट्रांसनेशनल सोशल मूवमेंट थे जिन्होंने इसका विरोध किया था कि जो वर्तमान न्यू लिबरल आइडियोलॉजी है जो नव उदारवादी विचारधारा है वो किस प्रकार से मार्केट कि सुपरमेसिस को बकरार करके जो ह्यूमन सुपरमेसी है जो मानवीय सर्वोच्चता है जो मानवीय सोच है उसको कहीं ना कहीं दरकिनार कर रही है और जो वजारीकृत सोच है या जो वाणिज्यवादी सोच है उसको आगे करके ह्यूमन वैल्यू को डिवैल्यूड कर रही है इस व्यवस्था के विरोध में जो एक वर्ल्ड सोशल फोरम जैसी एक संस्था का सम्मेलन किया गया था ब्राजील में पोर्टो एल्जर्स में उसकी हम इस इस लेक्चर्स में चर्चा करेंगे साथ ही साथ जो ग्लोबल जस्टिस मूवमेंट का जो पूरा का पूरा अवलोकन किया गया है उसकी हम चर्चा करेंगे साथ साथ वेस्टर्न कंट्री का होते हुए भी फ्रांस जो ये माना जाता है कि ग्रेट ब्रिटेन अमेरिका और फ्रांस ग्लोबलाइजेशन के एंकर के रूप में वर्तमान वैश्विक व्यवस्था में चल रहे हैं उनका क्या सोच था आखिर फ्रांस जो है वो क्यों अपने आप को इकोनॉमी रूप से इंटीग्रेट करने की कोशिश कर रहा है लेकिन कल्चरल रूप से इंटीग्रेट करने की कोशिश नहीं कर रहा है साथ ही साथ ग्लोबलाइजेशन की जगह डी ग्लोबलाइजेशन का जो कंसेप्ट है वो क्या है फिर भारतीय पर्यावरण विद बंदना शिवा का जो कंसेप्ट था जिसने थ्री वेव ऑफ ग्लोबलाइजेशन का जो कंसेप्ट दिया वो क्या है इसकी हम चर्चा करेंगे साथ ही साथ पिछले लेक्चर्स में हमने जो चर्चा किया था कि स्टिगले के कंसेप्ट मार्केट फंडामेंटलिज्म और आमट क्षेत्र का कंसेप्ट रिसोर्स कैपेबिलिटीज की उसकी भी थोड़ी बहुत हम चर्चा करेंगे और हम ये कोशिश करने की कोशिश करेंगे कि आखिर अल्टरनेटिव पर्सपेक्टिव ऑफ ग्लोबलाइजेशन जो है या कहने की का कोशिश क्या कर रहा है आखिर वो किस रूप में वैश्विक व्यवस्था को देख रहा है वो वह क्या कहना चाहता है इस पूरे वैचारिक आयाम को 
हम सबसे पहले थ्रोटिकल अंडरस्टैंडिंग में कमबद्ध करने की कोशिश करेंगे और उसके बाद हम इसे फिर जो उसका वैकल्पिक आयाम जो दिया गया है जिस जिसमें कि न्यू डेमोक्रेसी से लेकर सस्टेनेबिलिटी से लेकर सब्सिडी हटाने की बात से लेकर तमाम प्रकार के ग्लोबल गवर्नेंस की जो बात कही गई है उसका हम विस्तार से चर्चा करेंगे और इस इस लेक्चर्स को हम जो पार्ट दो है इसको हम इस, इसी क्रम में समाप्त करने का प्रयास करेंगे और हमें लगता है कि यह लेक्चर आपके लिए एक बेहद ही प्रासंगिक सिद्ध होगा और इसी रूप में हम इसको समझने का प्रयास करते हैं तो जो ये जो सेकेंड लेक्चर्स का जो स्लाइड फर्स्ट है वो कहता है थ्रोटिकल डायमेंशन की बात करता है जिसमें कहता है कि जोसेफ स्टिगले की मार्केट फंडामेंटलिज्म की बात करता है जिसकी चर्चा हमने पिछले लेक्चर्स में भी किया था जिसमें हमने कहा था कि जब जोसेफ स्टिगले जो नोबेल लॉरेट है जिन्होंने ये कहा था कि भाई आज के डेट में जो वर्तमान वैश्विक व्यवस्था चल रही है उसमें सबसे बड़ी जो खामियाँ हैं वो यह खामियाँ हैं कि वो हर विषय को यह कहता है कि जो भी समस्याएं चाहे सामाजिक समस्या हो चाहे सांस्कृतिक समस्या हो चाहे आर्थिक समस्या हो चाहे राजनीतिक समस्या हो हर चीज का निर्णय जो है बाजार करेगा और मार्केट ये तय करेगा कि आपकी वैश्विक व्यवस्था कैसे चलेगी आपकी राज्य राज्य की जनजीवन कैसे चलेंगे आपके सामाजिक जनजीवन कैसे चलेंगे आपको सांस्कृतिक जनजीवन कैसे चलेंगे तो इस इस चीज का स्टिकले ने कड़ा विरोध किया था और कहा था कि इस प्रकार के जो सोच है वो कहीं ना कहीं ह्यूमन वैल्यू को डिवैल्यूट कर रहा है और हमें इसे रोकने का प्रयास करना चाहिए अन्यथा वैश्विक व्यवस्था कहीं ना कहीं गलत दिशा में या एक हैफ्स एंड हैफ्स नोट्स का जो कंसेप्ट था मार्क्सिन नोशन में कहीं ना कहीं उस दिशा में बढ़ती दिखाई देगी दूसरी तरफ जो अहमद सेन का कंसेप्ट था जो इक्विटेबल इक्विटेबल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ रिसोर्सेज को जैसे कि जनरली आपने जो पॉलिटिकल साइंस में जॉन रॉल्सन का कंसेप्ट पढ़ा होगा जिसमें उन्होंने प्राइमरी गुड्स के फेयर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ प्राइमरी गुड्स की बात कहा था जिसमें कि जो भी एक सामाजिक व्यक्ति होता है वो ये चाहता है कि जो उसकी डिजायर्स हैं जो उसके जो वेलविंग्स हैं जो उसकी सोशल रिकोगशंस हैं वो उसको मिलते रहे और खास करके लैंड रिसोर्सेज वाटर जो जो मौलिक चीज़ें हैं उस पर उनका आ, उनका आ, आ, उनको आसानी से प्राप्त होते होते रहे यह जो एक सोच है उसके विरुद्ध एक सोच उन्होंने दिया था इक्विटिव डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ रिसोर्सेज को जिसको कैपिलिटी बिल्डिंग अप्रोच के रूप में वो करने का प्रयास कर रहे थे कि आखिर ये जो सिस्टम है जो वर्तमान में जो एक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की बात करता है वो केवल सामाजिक जीवन में कोशिश ये करता है कि किस प्रकार के चीज़ें किस किस तरह से समाज में वितरण हो सके लेकिन लोगों के क्षमता में कैसे विकसित हो लोग जो जो उनकी आवश्यकता है उस आवश्यकताओं को वो स्वयं कैसे उस चीज़ों को पूर्ति कर सकें इस पर उन्होंने ज़्यादा बल दिया और एक डेवलपमेंटल इकोनॉमिक्स के रूप में वो ये करने की कोशिश कर रहे थे कि आज के परिप्रेक्ष्य में जो जीडीपी के माध्यम से या कंसेंट्रेट डेवलपमेंट के माध्यम से या मार्केट के माध्यम से जो हर समस्याओं को या हर प्रॉब्लम्स को तय करने की कोशिश की जा रही है वह कोई निदान नहीं हो सकता जब तक कि जो नीड बेस्ड अप्रोच है जो सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट का जो अप्रोच है जिसके माध्यम से आप हर व्यक्ति अपने आप में एक कैपुल एक क्षमता निर्माण करके उस समाज में अपनी भागीदारी सुनिश्चित कर सकता है जब तक वह संभव नहीं होगा वैश्विक समाज या समाज जो राजनीतिक समाज है वो एक सुनिश्चित दिशा में या एक कन्फ्लिक्ट मुक्त समाज में नहीं रह सकता और इसलिए वो बार बार इस बात पर बल दे रहे थे कि प्राइमरी गुड्स के डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन से ज़्यादा इम्पॉर्टेंट ये है कि किस प्रकार से लोगों में कैपिलिटी बिल्डिंग किया जाए वहीं पर हमने देखा कि पीटर इबांस जो हैं जो काउंटर हेजमोनिक ग्लोबलाइजेशन की बात करते हैं तो वो उनका ये कहना था कि जिस प्रकार से वाशिंगटन कंसेस एजेंडा के माध्यम से जो 1991 के बाद से एक विश्व बैंक के द्वारा या यूएस ट्रेजरी के द्वारा या आईएमएफ के द्वारा या डब्ल्यू गेट या डब्ल्यू टी जैसी संस्था के द्वारा यह तय कर दिया गया था कि जो वर्तमान आर्थिक व्यवस्था है जो न्यू लिबरल आइडियोलॉजी है वो इनहेबिटेबल है और इसी व्यवस्था के माध्यम से एक वैश्विक व्यवस्था का विकास हो सकता है उसके विरुद्ध पीटर इवांस जैसे सोशोलॉजिस्ट ने एक नए विचार को आगे लाया और उन्होंने कहा कि काउंटर हेजमोनिक के अप्रोच काउंटर हेजमोनिक सोच को कि आखिर ये जो ग्लोबलाइजेशन जिसमें फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशंस को पैरिटी दी गई है जिसमें वित्तीय संस्थाओं को अधिक से अधिक महत्व दिया गया है जबकि जो अन्य संस्था हैं उसको इग्नोर करने की कोशिश की गई है उसको किस प्रकार से काउंटर किया जा सकता है तो जो फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन की जो हेजमोनी थी उसके उसके विरुद्ध जो उन्होंने जो संदर्भ रखा उस पर उन्होंने काउंटर हेजमोनिक ग्लोबलाइजेशन का एक कंसेप्ट दिया जिसमें उन्होंने कहा कि तीन 
जो महत्वपूर्ण विषय हैं वो ये ग्लोबल फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशंस की जो दादागिरी चल रही है जो ग्लोबल फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशंस की जो हैजमानी है जिसके आधार पर पूरी वैश्विक व्यवस्था को चलाने का प्रयास किया जा रहा है उसके खिलाफ हम एक ट्रांसनेशनल सोशल मूवमेंट या उसको हम काउंटर कर सकते हैं जिसमें उन्होंने इन्वायरमेंट को लेबर मूवमेंट को और वीमेन मूवमेंट को बड़ा ही सार्थक माना और कहा कि यदि विश्व की महिलाएँ एक साथ खड़ी हो जाएँ या विश्व के जो लेबर मूवमेंट है जिसके जो मार्केट में सबसे ज़्यादा प्रभावित हो रहा है या उन्होंने कहा कि जो इन्वायरमेंट जो वर्तमान जो पर्यावरण की जो समस्याएं हैं वो जब तक इस समस्याओं का समाधान कोई एक राष्ट्र नहीं कर सकता या मार्केट के द्वारा नहीं सिद्ध हो सकती है तो कहा कि इन ये जो तीन प्रकार के मूवमेंट जो ट्रांसनेशनल सोशल मूवमेंट्स हैं खासकर जो वुमेन सेंट्रिक हैं जो इन्वायरमेंट सेंट्रिक हैं जो लेबर सेंट्रिक हैं यदि ये तीनों एक साथ आ जाएँ तो ये ग्लोबल फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन जैसे मार्केट की सुपर मेसी जो है उसको आसानी से काउंटर किया जा सकता वहीं जो बेल्जियन सोशलिस्ट जो जोफ्री प्लेयर्स थे इन्होंने ग्लोबल जस्टिस मूवमेंट खास करके जब हम जब भी हम इस बात की चर्चा करते हैं कि किस प्रकार से अल्टरनेटिव परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ ग्लोबलाइजेशन की बात किया जा सकता है या अल्टरनेटिव ऑफ ग्लोबलाइजेशन किया है या क्रिटिकल ग्लोबलाइजेशन किया है या इसके डिफरेंट इन, इन जो स्वरूप हैं वो क्या है तो तमाम स्वरूप को यदि हम सापेक्ष एक सकारात्मक ढंग से सोचने का प्रयास करें तो हम देखते हैं कि ग्लोबल जस्टिस मूवमेंट जो है इस जो एक ट्रांसनेशनल सोशल मूवमेंट के रूप में जो चला जिसमें हमने ये कहा कि अपने पिछले लेक्चर्स में मैंने इस बात को बार बार जिक्र किया था कि वाशिंगटन कंसेंस एजेंडा के आने के बाद जितनी भी राज्य राज्य थी वैश्विक राज्य थे उन्होंने यह मान लिया था कि ग्लोबलाइजेशन जो है इनविटेबल और नेचुरल प्रोसेस है और कोई भी राज्य इसकी इसका विरोध नहीं कर रहा था चाहे वो साम्यवादी सोच की राज्य हो चाहे वो आदर्शवादी सोच का राज्य हो चाहे फासिस्टवादी सोच का राज्य हो चाहे उदारवादी सोच का राज्य हो चाहे वो एकात्मक व्यवस्था रखा हो या संघात्मक व्यवस्था रखा हो या अधिकारी अधिकारी तंत्र हो हर ने इस बात को मान लिया था कि वाशिंगटन कस्ट एजेंडा के बाद या सोवियत संघ के विघटन के बाद कि ग्लोबलाइजेशन जो है भूमंडलीकरण जो है एक नेचुरल प्रोसेस है और ये एक अपरिहार प्रक्रिया है और वैश्विक आर्थिक एवं राजनीतिक जीवन जीने के लिए यही एक बेहतर वैश्विक राजनीति को आगे ले सकता है उसके विरुद्ध जिस जिस वैश्विक सांस्कृतिक सामाजिक आंदोलन की शुरुआत हुई राजनीतिक आंदोलन की शुरुआत हुई उसे हम ग्लोबल जस्टिस मूवमेंट के रूप में जानते हैं और इस बात पर अधिक से अधिक बल दिया गया कि जो बात को यह कहा जा रहा है कि यह नेचुरल है ये इनविटेबल है यह प्राकृतिक है या परिहार्य है और इसी प्रकार से समाज या विश्व विकास कर सकता है उसको काउंटर करने का प्रयास किया गया और कहा गया कि जो नव उदारवादी पूंजीवादी सोच है या वस्तुतः कॉर्पोरेट पूंजीपतियों की सोच है न कि एक मानवतावादी सोच है और एक मानवीय सोच के लिए हमें एक नए विचारों के साथ एक ऐसे विचारों के साथ चलना पड़ेगा जहां पर मानवीय मूल्यों को अधिक से अधिक महत्व तो देना पड़ेगा जहां महिलाओं को अधिक से अधिक भागीदारी देनी पड़ेगी जहां जो इंडिजिनस लोग हैं जो आदिवासी हैं जो पिछड़े हैं उनको अधिक से अधिक भागीदारी सुनिश्चित करनी पड़ेगी जो जो विश्व के जो सदर्न कंट्रीज हैं खासकर जो अफ्रीका एशिया लेटिन अमेरिका में की जो कंट्री है जिनकी भागीदारी अभी विश्व में सुनिश्चित नहीं हो पाई है उनको अधिक से अधिक भागीदारी देना पड़ेगा साथ ही साथ जो वैश्विक अर्थव्यवस्था है जो अनइक्वल है अनजस्ट है इन्वायरमेंटल इन्वायरमेंटली हार्मफुल है उस व्यवस्था को हमें बदलना पड़ेगा और इस कंसेप्ट में जोफ्री प्लेयर्स ने पूरे के पूरे ग्लोबल जस्टिस मूवमेंट को तीन भागों में बांटने की कोशिश किया और कहा कि 90s में खास करके आपने जब पिस्टा मूवमेंट का नाम सुना होगा या फिर बाद में आपने सेटल में देखा जियोना में देखा प्रेग में देखा वाशिंगटन डीसी में देखा और उसके बाद उसका वर्ल्ड सोशल फोरम में एक परिणति परिणति के रूप में आपने ब्राजील में एक सम्मेलन को देखा और उसके बाद 2005 के बाद आपने देखा कि सम्मेलन तो हुए लेकिन पॉलिसेंट्रिक सम्मेलन हुए लेकिन उस प्रकार सम्मेलन सक्सेसफुल नहीं हो पाया तो उसको आपने देखा तो इस रूप से जो फिर प्लेयर्स ने पूरे ग्लोबल जस्टिस मूवमेंट की जो विशेषताएं थी साथ साथ किस प्रकार से उसने ग्लोबलाइजेशन के विचारों को काउंटर किया उसकी हम विस्तार से चर्चा करेंगे और साथ ही साथ उसके बाद हमने देखते हैं कि वेल्डन वेलोज का व्यू है डी पर 
جس میں ڈی گلوائیسنس میں انہوں نے ون پالیسی فٹس آل کی بات کہ یہ کہا ہے کہ جو ایک کنسپٹ ہے کہ ہر سمجھتہ کا سمادھان جو ہے مارکٹ کے دورہ ہو جائے گا یا ہر چیز کا سالیوسن کے والا مارکٹ ہے اور ہر پرابلم جو بھی بس میں ڈیولپمنٹ کا پرابلم ہو یا کلچرل ہیڈمنائیسن کا پرابلم ہو یا مارجنائیسن کا پرابلم ہو یا انیسنس رائٹ کا پرابلم ہو یا ویمن پارٹیسن کی بات ہو تو انہوں نے کہا کہ ایکوال اپورچنٹی مارکٹ کے دورہ جب ملنا شروع ہوگا تو ہر پرکار کی سمسیہ جو دور ہو جائے گی اس کو ویڈن ویلو نے کرٹیسائز کیا اور اس پرکار سے ایک نئے تھوٹیکل آیام کو ہم نے دیکھنے کو ملا وہیں پر بھارتی چین تک مدنہ شیبا نے اپنی بات رکھنے کی کوسٹس کی اور کہا کہ جس پرکار سے یہ کہا جا رہا ہے کہ بھومن لکرن ایک پراکرتک اپڑیہ پرکریا ہے اس کو انہوں نے سیرے سے خارج کیا اور کہا کہ یہ بالکل ایک نارمیٹری پرٹیکل پروسس نہیں ہے جس کو اس روپ سے کہنے کے کوسس کیا جا رہا ہے بلکہ یہ ایک ایسی پرکریا ہے جس میں جو سکتی سالی ہے وہ اپنی ایجنڈے کو ویک کنٹریز پر تھوپنے کی کوسس کر رہا ہے جب وہ یہ بات کہتی ہے کہ یہ جو ایک پروسس ہے وہ یہ ہے کہ جو کیپٹسٹ کنٹری ہے یا جو ڈومیٹنگ کنٹریز آف دا ورلڈ ہے جیسے کہ امریکہ ہے یا فرانس ہے یا گریٹ بیٹن ہے یا جرمنی ہے یا جپان ہے یا چین جیسے راست جو اب سکسالی ہوتے جا رہے ہیں آرتک روپ سے تو ان کی نیتی کو کہیں نے کہیں جو ویک راست ہیں جو کمجور راست ہیں جو ڈبلپنگ راست ہیں یا جو انڈر ڈبلپنگ راست ہیں ان پر تھوپنے کی کوسیس کی جا رہی ہے اس لیے یہ ایک نارمیٹی پروسس ہو ہی نہیں سکتا یا تو ایک ایسا پروسس ہے جس میں کی کمجور راستوں پر مجبوط راست اپنے نیتی کو تھوپنے کی کوسیس کرتا ہے تو اس کو بنا سیوا نے کہا کہ یہ جو تھری ویو ایف آف کلوبلائیسن کی اس نے چرچہ کی ہے اور جس کی ہم چرچہ بعد میں کرتے ہیں اور اس میں انہوں نے کہا کہ کس پرکار سے تھری ویو آف کلوبلائیسن جس کو ابھی کہا رہا ہے کنٹرپورٹی کلوبلائیسن جو ہے ہر ایک راست کو یا ہر ایک بیکتی کو یا ہر ایک سماج کو ایک نئے افسر پتان کرے گا ایسی بات نہیں ہے دوسرا پوائنٹ وہ کہتے ہیں کہ لیبرائزنگ ورلڈ ایکنومی منس انہانسنگ سٹیٹ ان کارپورٹ پاورز وہیں وہ کہتے ہیں کہ جو ایکنومی کو ادھک سے ادھک لیبرائز کرنے کی جو بات کہی جا رہی ہے وہ بستتہ کارپورٹ پاورز کو انہانسمنٹ ہے سٹیٹ پاور کو انہانسمنٹ کی بات ہے اس لیے انہوں نے کہا کہ اس طرح کے ویچاروں کو کاؤنٹر کرنے کے لیے ہمیں کہیں نے کہیں پیپلز مومنٹ کو بیلڈ اپ کرنا پڑے گا اور جب تک ہم کومیٹی رائٹس ان بائی ڈیورسٹی جب ویتہ کو شاہت نہیں لائیں گے تب تک ہم اس کو سمجھ نہیں سکتے ہیں وہیں پر مارکوس جیسے چنتک جو تھے انہوں نے نیٹورک آف وائسز کی بات کی دہ فرنچ الٹرنیٹیوز میں جس میں کہ فرانس اپنے کلچرل ایڈنٹیٹی کو بھولنا نہیں چاہتا لیکن ایکنومک انٹیگریشنز میں گلوبلائیسن کے ساتھ ہے وہیں سائیور ایکٹیویزم میں ہم نے یہ دیکھا کہ ایسین فائننسل کرائیسز کے قرآن انڈونیسیا سے سہروں میں چینیز لوگوں کے خلاف کس پرکار کا جنان دولن ہوا اور جب وہاں پر ہنسا ہوئی تو ایک جو فیس بک یا واتس ایپ یا آپ سوسل میڈیا کے مادیم سے جو ایک ہورین گلوبل چینیز پیپول کی جگہ سمو تھا اس نے کس پرکار سے پرتیک بیس کے پرتیک سہروں میں اس کے خلاف ایک جناندولن کا یا سماجی کا اندولن کا سروپ اپنایا اسی طرح سے ہم دیکھتے ہیں کہ بومریج پیٹرنز میں کہتا ہے کہ ایکٹیویسٹ بیانڈ بورڈرز جو کی ایک سنستہ ہے جس میں کہ انڈونیسیا کے جو ورکرز تھے جن کا انہومن کنڈیشنز میں ورک لیا دیا تھا نائکی کنٹریکٹرز کے دورہ اس نے کس پرکار سے ویسی کستر پر ٹرانس نسل سوسل مومنٹ کو بیلڈ اپ کیا اور وہاں کے جو سرکار تھی جو ان کی باتوں کو نہیں سن رہی تھی اس کو انہوں نے پلٹ کر ایک نئی نیتی کو لاغو کرنے کے لئے بات کیا اور پھر لاسٹ میں ہم دیکھتے ہیں کہ ڈینیل کوہنز کا جو ایڈیا ہے جو ایک طرح سے سمرائز کرتا ہے یا کر یہ انٹی گلوبلائیسن مومنٹ ہے یا جو الٹرنیٹیو آف گلوبلائیسن ہے جس میں وہ کہتا ہے کہ دیکھئے یہ دو طرح کے مومنٹس ہیں ایک تو ویسے لوگ مومنٹ کر رہے ہیں جو کی انٹی ویسٹ ہیں انٹی ویسٹ ہیں تو ان کا یہ کہنا ہے کہ جس میں ہنٹیگرن کا جو اپروز تھا کلیسس آف سیبلائیزیشن جس میں وہ ملہ کی بات کرتا ہے کہتا ہے کہ جو انٹی امریکہ انٹی ویسٹ سوچ کو لے کر چلتا ہے جو کلیسس آف سیبلائیزیشن کو سوچ کو لے کر چلتا ہے تو ان کو یہ لگتا ہے کہ جو گلائیسنس ہے جو بھومنڈیکرن ہے وہ ان پر امپوز کیا جا رہا ہے نہ کہ یا کوئی ایک پرکرتی کی ایک نیچرل پروسس ہے جو سب کے لیے اپریہار ہے ان کا یہ ماننا ہے کہ نیو لیبرل ایڈیولوجی کے دوارہ ادھیک سے ادھیک ریسورسز کا ایکسٹیکشن کرنی کوسس کی جا رہی ہے اور جو سٹیگننٹ ایکنومی ہے اس کو ادھیک سے ادھیک ایکنومی کو سرکولیٹ کرنے کے کوسس کیا جا رہا ہے جو گریب دنیا ہے اس کے مادیم سے دوسری سوچ ڈینیل کوہن کہتے ہیں کہ جو مارکسسٹ ہیں جو کہیں نہیں کہیں جو لیبرل ویلیو سے سامت نہیں ہیں 
उनके द्वारा ये अल्टरनेटिव ग्लोबल लाइसेंस का या क्रिटिक ऑफ ग्लोबल लाइसेंस का मुहिम चलाया चलाया जा रहा है क्योंकि जो मार्क्सिस्ट नोशंस ऑफ कैपिटलिस्ट मार्क्सिस्ट नोशंस ऑफ जो इकोनॉमी थी वो कहीं ना कहीं विश्व व्यवस्था में अस्वीकार कर दिया गया और जिस चीज को मार्क्सिस्ट अभी भी आइडियोलॉजिकली आइडियोलॉजिकल डिफीट को स्वीकार करने के लिए तैयार नहीं है इसलिए इस इस तरह के मूवमेंट्स को वो जगह जगह चलाते रहते हैं और इस इस बात को जोर देते हैं कि इंडिजिनस राइट्स को महत्व नहीं दिया जा रहा है महिलाओं के अधिकारों को जगह नहीं दी जा रही है या मार्केट के द्वारा शोषण हो रहा है जबकि वास्तविकता ये है कि उदारवादी वैल्यू में व्यक्तिगत अधिकारों को अधिक से अधिक मान्यता दी जाती है महिलाओं को अधिक से अधिक भागीदारी दी जाती है तो इस प्रकार के जो थ्रोटिकल डायमेंशन है जिसमें हमने देखा कि जोसेफ स्टिगले से लेकर अमर्त सेन से लेकर वेल्डन वेलो से लेकर वंदना सिवा से लेकर डेनियल कोहिन तक के जो विभिन्न विचार आए हैं उसको कहीं ना कहीं हम समझने की कोशिश इस लेक्चर्स में करने का प्रयास करते हैं कंसिडरिंग ऑल दीज पॉइंट्स व्हाट वी हैव डिस्कस इट रिगार्डिंग अल्टरनेटिव ऑफ ग्लोबलाइजेशंस आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स अबाउट द जोसेफ स्टिकलेज मार्केट फंडामेंटलिज्म वेयर ही हैज सेड कि सी इन द कंसेप्ट ऑफ एडम स्मिथ वेयर इन द लेसोस्फेयर मोर एंड मोर power should be given to the market and it has been decided that you see the market would uh, 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 sort out all kind of problems of the society so again after the 90s the same situation emerged across the world where the new liberal ideology uh, made this kind of assertions that see one should not uh, interfere in the market and the state should roll back itself uh, and only concentrate itself to the law and order issues rather than uh, taking all the responsibilities of the society so joseph stigler criticized uh, uh, this approach and they, uh, they said ki see this uh, uh, counter uh, alternate alt alternate organizations have been emerged due to this kind of thinking where the market has given the supremacies and human has given the less importance then the second amat is in talking about ki see the way everything had been uh, determined on the basis of the gross development uh, enhancement uh, rising of the sensex and the uh, uh, distributions of the primary goods they said ki see as long as the capability would not build up across the society uh, this would uh, uh, not sort out the problems of the uh, third world countries or the or the develop, developing countries so as a developmental economist he suggested that the more important factor is to build uh, building a capability among the uh, people building a capability among the society rather than distributing primary goods among the peoples and distributing lands and other things they said ki see even if you distribute the lands even if you distribute the resources as long as you would not build up a capability that would not matter for them and after such certain time they again would trap in the in the impoverishment uh, think, thinking so they said ki the most important dimensions of the alternative globalization movement or the global justice movement to think about how to build a capability among the people how to build a capability among the society how to build a capability among the nations which have been still marginalized then the peter simons talking about a uh, counter hegemonic globalization where he challenged the notions of uh, uh, washington crisis agenda uh, uh, and as we, uh, along with also he challenged the notions of uh, new liberal ideology and he said you see the three movements uh, three three pillars of the counter hegemonic uh, globalization who can challenge this financial hegemony of the uh, new liberal ideology one is the women movement another one is the environmental movement and third one is the labor movement they said ki if they club together and they fought against this uh, global financial hegemony definitely we would reach on certain uh, uh, conclusions where once again uh, the people would accept that the human value is more important than the market value equally the belgian socialist geoffrey players also uh, given the details about the global justice movement which we would uh, later on discuss about ki how uh, in the 90s the global justice movement started then in the 91 to 2001 the second phase he discussed about ki how the world social forum uh, took a very concrete shape and started uh, giving uh, new dimensions about the alternative globalization perspectives then uh, after 2005 what we have witnessed that the movement started losing its uh uh momentum and then the uh, wilden bellow is talking about the deglobalization where he said ki see the one policy fits all kind of thinking would not uh, very fruitful for the uh, um, 
society which are still marginalized and which are still uh, lacking all kind of basic needs. So they said, you see, the market may be uh, uh, playing a very influential role for the uh, developed society, but those who are the marginal, those who are still struggling to be part of the mainstream society, for them it's not a very important factor. So uh, <coughs> another thinkers, uh, those who counter the Washington agenda, those who counter the new liberal ideology, is the Indian thinker, Indian environmentalist Bandana Siba. She talked about, you see, the way uh, people are talking about, you see, the globalization is inevitable and a natural process. That is not the truth. Basically, it, 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 it is the process uh, which enhancing the state power and which, in, uh, which imposing the new liberal ideology, which imposing the market on the uh, powerful or on the weak. So they said, you see, uh, basically, when we talk about the... Uh, um, in the in the sense of uh, Bandana Siva concept, then she said, you see, uh, this whole the process of globalization is basically enhancing the power of the state and enhancing the power of the corporate. So she talked about, you see, there's a requirement of the people's movement and the community rights and biodiversity. So equally, the Marcos calls for a network of voices where he said, you see, uh, as, uh, as I have said it, you see, he's a, one of the very important. Uh, 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 <coughs> leaders of the alternative globalization movement, uh, which we are going to discuss. And then in the French alternatives where French people are not very much agreed with the cultural uh, uh, assimilations of the uh, whole wo world, but they want to have a distinguished cultural identity, but at the same time they want, their, uh, uh, they want to integrate their economy with the world. Then in the cyber activism, what we see, the importance of the social uh, media like Facebook, like WhatsApp and all other things. And uh, as example, what we witnessed in, in, when there was a, a financial crisis in the Indonesia in 1997, uh, what we witnessed, there was a uh, uh, anti-Chinese movement were going across the Indonesia and people were uh, pelting against the Ch Chinese peoples, but the Chinese peoples demonstrated, demonstrated against, uh, against this kind of torture and human uh, treatment uh, to the people of the Ch uh, Chinese origin and they form a organization that is called the Korean Global Chinese Peoples and they demonstrated across the world to mobilize the uh, world community to um, force the Indonesian government to stop this kind of inhuman uh, uh, behavior against the Chinese peoples. So uh, uh, then the Daniel Thornus, uh, Daniel Scones views who tried to identify who try to describe this whole the alternative globalization movement in the two part one through the cl class of civilization where they say okay, those who are anti waste like the mullahs and uh, and others and second they say okay, the Marxists who oppose the whole the movement of the uh, neoliberal ideology or or those who failed to provide alternative uh, in the socialist economy so they try to anyhow uh, counter the whole the movement of the neoliberal ideology which are now Accept, ex accepted across the world and there is no alternative of this uh, new liberal ideology. So the, uh, keeping all this concept in the mind, we are going to discuss and elaborate uh, uh, this alternative perspective of license in our uh, uh, post-break uh, sessions. Thank you. No, thank you, sir. Thank you so very much for giving us uh, this uh, uh, session. Friends, we will be back after a short break. You are requested to be with us. Thank you.
Hello friends, welcome back to this session. Friends, as you know that uh, we are carrying forward uh, our topic on alternatives of globalization and we are discussing various concepts today. And for the discussion on the topic, we have with us in our studio Dr. Sujit Thakur. Dr. Sujit Thakur is Assistant Professor in Department of Political Science, the Alsin College, University of Delhi. So let's welcome our guest, Dr. Thakur, once again. Hello, sir. Welcome to the lecture. Thank you. Uh, now, once again, we are going to elaborate all the concepts, theoretical concepts which have been given by the Weldon Bellows, Bandana Shiva uh, and others. So, the first concept uh, of the deglobalization which has been given by the Weldon Bellows, here the, this slide is talking about what is the meaning of the deglobalization. They say that the implementation of new liberal dogmas leads to greater poverty and equality in third world. The second point they say, the WTO, WTO is not a, an independent body, but a representative of American state and cooperative interest. Third point they say, positive alternative to WTO such as UNCTAD and Mercosur. And fourth point they say, the capital control at both local and regional level like Malaysia, Chile and China progress. And land reform, agrarian reform in Asia and Latin America. See, when the Weldon Bellow talking about the deglobalization, he said, he, he given the very specific concept, ki, what does it mean? They say, ki, see, this is the, this new liberal ideology which are talking about, ki, see, the, all the problem of the poverty, inequality, uh, opportunities would be sorted out through the uh, free access of the capital, free flow of the trade, uh, lower trade barriers, more and more integrations of the world economy. They are talking, ki, it has not happened. What happened? You see, this globalization has led to more unjust, unequal, inherently harmful policies and the people who are marginalized become getting more and more marginalized, the people who are, who are poor become getting more and more poorer, the country who are not developed getting more and more underdeveloped, underdeveloped. so there is a need to have alternatives, there is a need to to think differently rather than to support this new liberal dogmas who talked about, you see, the market would sort out all kind of the problems. So the Weldon Velos, through the concept of deglobalization, trying to deconstruct the whole the notions of the globalization, which talking about the uh, which talking about every problem can be sorted out through the market. The second point they're talking about the WTO. They are talking about, you see, as a theoretically, as a principally, what we understood that the WTO is an institution which would provide a equal access of trade to all the countries. But in fact, it is not independent institutions. What the world and world are trying to tell us, they are telling us, see, the WTO is basically representing the America. It is basically representing the cooperative interest. It is not representing the whole world. It is not representing the human species where the trade is for the benefit of all. They are telling the, the WTO is now an institution which is only thinking about the interest of the corporates, which is thinking only about the interest of the, uh, the powerful countries, which is only thinking about to how the global economy would generate more and more profit rather than to thinking about how the human society would progress, how the problem of human society would get eradicated. So they talked about, you see, it's better to replace uh, WTO through the UNCTAD. It means the Weldon Bureau trying to tell us, you see, the, at the local and regional level, more and more institutions should be given priority rather than the global level, which are representing, uh, which, which is right now represented by the WTO. And Weldon Bureau trying to tell us, you see, this institution is in fact a, a representative of the powerful countries. So the, the poor countries, the southern countries, Latin American, Asian countries should uh, avoid to become a part of uh, uh, this WTO policies. And as long as they would not uh, uh, break all kind of relationship with, with them, uh, the, the problem will exist in this country. So they try to tell us, you see, uh, a new policy is required in, in this country. And they said, United Nations Conference for Trade and Development would be the best uh, institutions which would sort out the uh, unequal exchange trade system in the world. And as long as we would be part of the WTO, we would face the same problems. Then this, they, they say, you see, uh, uh, capital control, they talked about, you see, there is no need of the, uh, to give the free market, free trade 
free uh, all kind of low trade barriers they are talking about you see take the example of malaysia chile and china who regulate the uh, their state economy and they progressed more than the other those who open its economy and they given the free hand to the market so they said you see the way the washington agenda the way the globalization is trying to tell us you see as long as you, you cannot integrate the economy as, as as long as you cannot open your market your system would not progress and your state would not get the developmental path they are telling that is not the truth the truth is that even the country like china who integrated its, its market with the world economy but command all kind of regulations in the state hand equally they give the example of the chile and the malaysia they said ki they also deregulate their economy but the, the state control uh, uh, on the uh, on the state uh, market so they said ki see if we follow this kind of policy this would lead more success to the developing country this would this would lead more success to the underdeveloped countries rather than integrate its economy to the world market then he talking about you see the land reform green reform in asia and latin america see they that talking about you see the the most important factor of the southern countries or basically the countries who are still uh, become a part of the mainstream uh, economic system they are talking as long as they would not uh do a land reform in their country the problem of poverty the farmer distress uh, unequal exchange all kind of uh, uh, agriculture problem would continue so they say you see the most important factor is to remove all kind of uh, 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 this uh, land reform problems and as long as this would not be sorted out uh, the problem would be persist so through wilden velo they try to tell us you see the alternative uh, alternative of wto is angtad they say the alternative of uh, uh, new liberal ideology is a state regulations they trying to tell us you see if you want to control the distress of the farmers and agriculture then you have to go for the land reforms and uh, they give this kind of alternative perspective for the uh, 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 anti globalization movement then we come to the global justice movement of the players who try to uh, geoffrey players of the belgian sociologist he uh, defined the, uh, uh, the global justice movement or he classified the global justice movement in the three phases first phase he talk about local and national mobilizations against new liberal ideology such as water and gas war in bolivia japitsa rebellion movement in mexico and indian farmer struggle movement against wto now see geoffrey players is the one of the sociologists who try to uh, uh, classify the global justice movement in the three phases in the first phase he identify the three movements in the 90s one in the bolivia gas and water movement second is japitsa in the mexico uh, in the 1994 and third one is the indian farmer movements the second period they talking about they started with mobilizations organized around global level like settle protest attac means tobin tax association for taxation of financial transactions and for the citizen actions global trade watch world march of women jubilee south and bhaya companies which claims to bring together over 100 million small farmers and india with 2005 wsf in for 12 years and third phase known as hesitant phase now see geoffrey players have identified has identified the three phases of the global justice movement first phase he has talked about a uh, bolivian gas and uh, gas and water war see what is the bolivian gas and water war it was in 1993 uh, 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 when the chococamba this is the place where the municipal government has privatized the water uh, uh, and that led to a um, indecisive movement against this privatization of the water supply and later on uh, the gas war took place in the bolivia where there is a road blockade where there is in the southern part of the bolivia Uh, people started demonstrating people started uh, questioning uh, the government policies because uh, the most of the livelihood depend on the natural gases and it has gone to the market hand and they started ex- exploiting all the natural gases but the livelihood uh, uh, of the people uh, started getting questioned so what we witness across the bolivia there was a 
crisis emerged and it led to a political crisis and economic crisis and later on what we witnessed, uh, there was a massive demonstrations against this uh, gas and war, uh, 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 privatization of the water and the gas issues and the government being changed, the president being replaced and uh, the, in the Bolivia, the, the social movements forced uh, the government to change its policy and they declared that uh, they also demanded that this license of the uh, natural gas and this license of the water and they said it, it's, it, it's a fundamental rights of every people so the water should be, give, uh, be provided to each and every individuals and equally they said you see the gas is, uh, should be nationalized and uh, when it was nationalized and when the water should be again come into the hand of the government then uh, the problem would be sorted out. So they say, say, those, they say about the water and gas. Then the Japitsa rebellion movement, it's also happened in the Mexico because in 1994, there was a massive economic crisis uh, Mexico faced. Though Americans tried to help it out, they, but the way the currency de devalued, the way the market crumbled, that led to a massive uh, uh, rebellious movement across the Mexico and the, the, the people of the Mexico came into the states and they demonstrated against the new liberal ideology and it, it, it led by the uh, Marcos, who, who, uh, Marcos and they replaced the government and then they tried to nationalize the whole economy of the Mexico. However, uh, it has not influenced a lot of uh, Latin American countries. But anyhow, despite all kind of support uh, and sustainable help from developmental help from the America, the movement uh, got the initial support and it, it made an impact on the uh, new liberal ideology. Then the Indian farmers struggles, the way the infinite peace clause has been added in the WTO where uh, the agriculture subsidy has been reduced um, uh, and it, uh, it, it has been decided in the WTO meeting that you see, uh, uh, you, one, ca one cannot give more than 10% of the subsidy of the uh, market price of the agriculture. That would be um, uh, led a massive uh, uh, protest ang uh, uh, against this kind of policy. And later, on, later on, in government forced the WTO to see as long as you cannot allow us we were not uh, going to sign on the Bali conventions uh, and later on WTO agreed. So, so whatever on the issue of the agriculture subsidy or whatever on the issue of the f f right to food security, what we witnessed that, you see, the Indian farmers played a very important role in mobilizing across the world against the agriculture subsidy and we witnessed across the world when there was a conference in the Seattle, uh, more than 100 32 ministers uh, gathered there and across uh, the world a transnational social movement built up and we forced uh, the WTO to postpone its, its meeting. So they tried to tell us, you see, in the first phase of the movement, what he identified, you see, this uh, Japista rebellion movement, Indian farmers struggle against the agriculture subsidy and the Bolivia gas and water movement. That played a very important role that given a, this kind, kind of understanding among the society, you see, there can be an alternative uh, uh, of the new liberal ideology. The second phase which got a momentum after this first phase and across the Seattle, Washington, Prague, uh, uh, then um, Port Algiers, uh, these movements got a uh, conceptual uh, understanding and he tried to, uh, the, the Geoffrey players tried to say that, you see, the uh, uh, Tobin tax uh, movement, then the Seattle protest, the global trade war, uh, then the world march of women. It, it shows that, you see, from the 1999 to 2005, the global justice movement uh, took a very uh, active uh, uh, space in the uh, world systems and they countered the uh, new liberal ideology. And but the, they also said yeah, after 2005, anyhow, uh, we we saw that the global movement started losing its momentum, and after that there are a lot of world social conference held, but it didn't get this kind of momentum. But once again, what we witnessing across the world, the momentum have been started coming. Well, people are starting talking about you see there's a need of giving uh, the human uh, society more importance than the market. 
then the world social forum uh, uh, this is the one of the uh, basic slogans of the world social forum is the alternative world is possible it uh, uh, and it, this is the second wave of the global justice movement uh, after the, uh, lot of protests in the seattle Guyana, washington dc prague and other places so in the proto algerian in january 2001 and 2005 the two conventions were held and later on 2012 also held in the proto algerian the 2002 european social forum in florence the 2004 w, w world social forum in mumbai 2006 it was decided that that the world social forum should be held in the polycentric places like in the bakambo caracas and karachi 2007 Nairobi, Dakar, Senegal in 2011, Porto Algiers in 2012, and Tunis, Tunisia in 2013. So, <clears throat> what we witnessed that you see from 2002 to 2013, there are number of conventions uh, being held, but the the momentum what we witnessed from 2002 to 2005 that we saw uh, it has been started losing after 2006. But what are the basic agenda? What are the main agenda of the, the World Social Forum? So, where what we see. The first point here, what we are understanding, the WSF committed to struggle for people's rights, freedom, security, employment, and education. The first point that is talking about the World Social Forum is committed to a struggle for people's rights, freedom, security, employment, and education. Second, they say fighting against hegemony of finance, destructions of indigenous culture, monopolizations of knowledge. Third point they are talking about reaffirm the supremacy of human ecological and social rights over the demand of finance and investors. Equality between men and women, preservation of environment, external debt repayment issues, concentrations of land ownership and so on, rejections of US military intervention in Iraq and in Latin America. Now see, when we studied, when we are going through the agenda of the World Social Forum, no one can reject whether you accept it or whether you, you, whether you consider it, it is a Marxist notion, whether you accept it, it is those who are the critic the, or those who are the anti west but they talked about, you see, they want security, they want education, but Washington consistent also talking about social infrastructure, they are also talking about uh, uh, giving more and more importance about the social infrastructure where they talked about the health, education and other systems. But here there are the differences. One is talking about the market should be given more priority on the education sectors. Market should be given the more priority on the health sectors. But they are talking about the, the health and education should be universal. This should be given to each and every individual. And it should not be based on the profit. So there are the differences here. Then they are talking about the security is the more important factor for everyone, whether it is the human security whether it is the women's security, whether there is a child security. So they are talking about, you see, market is only concern, concerned about uh, the place where they get the profit. But when as a human beings we think about, we think about whole the worth, earth, rather than we think about only the place where we can generate the profit. So they talked about, you see, the security of all should be the, our motto, rather than to think about security for those people who have, those who have notes, they should not have a, any kind of security. So uh, later on what we witnessed that the, uh, that the United Nations Development Program uh, cover all kind of human security issues and human security became a, one of the important issues for discussion for all of us. But uh, due to the constraints of time, we cannot discuss about it. But uh, it's covered about the health security, it's talk, talking about the environmental security, it's talking about the physical security, it's talking about uh, the cultural security, it's talking about the minority security. So it's talking, uh, it's taking overall uh, a comprehensive approach to think about human security. First, before, prior to that, we only think about the state's security. But now we are thinking about individual security right more and more. Then they're talking about, you see, uh, equality between men and women, like the feminist thinker talking about, you see, where are the women? So they also talking about, you see, as long as the men and women should not get the equal participation in the world systems, as long as the women should not get a more uh, participation in the world structure systems, uh, the society would not get the equitable uh, distribution of the resources. Then the preservation of environment, sustainability of environment is the another dimension where the World Social Forum is. Uh, uh, emphasizing then the external debt like in this from the 70s 80s but we witnessed that ki there is the Asian debt crisis then uh, in the 1994 debt movement just due to the Mexican debt, debt crisis then in the 1997 in the Indonesia when the people of the Indonesia started pelting against the 
uh, Rolling Stones against the Chinese peoples. That is also due to the Asian financial crisis. So they said, you see, uh, this all happened due to the a lot of uh, increase in the interest rates and the external debt pressure. So as long as we should not restructure this uh, uh, debt payment uh, issues, we cannot uh, get a proper world structure. Then the rejections of the US uh, military intervention in Iraq and Latin America, time and again a US uh, uh, without getting permissions from the UN Security Council or UN General Assembly try to violate the sovereignty of other rights and given the notions of the limited sovereignty rights that has been also questioned by the uh, uh, this alternative globalization movement. Then the uh, three wave of globalization what the Bandana Siva is talking about. Here they talk about the first wave was the colonization of the America, Asia and Australia by European power over the course of 1500 years. The second wave was the impositions of the West idea of development on non-Western culture. And third wave as the era of free trade or the history of recolonization. See, Bandana Siva when she talked about, you see, this is not a normative process. It's basically a liberalizing economy means impositions of, its pol uh, impositions of a strong state policy on the weak states. So here once again, she tried to describe it uh, the globalization in the three phases historically. They said, you see, the first phase you can easily trust it when there was a colonization process by the Western power throughout the America, Asia, and Australia, and almost 300 years, 400 years, they colonized, they extracted all the resources, and they developed themselves, and they developed as a core country, and they left other countries as a peripheral country. Uh, but later on, they're trying to tell, tell us, you see, the, the, on the name of industrial evolutions, on the name of development, on the name of modernization theory, what the concept they have given that development or non-Western culture means the West idea, means the Western idea, whether it's a political idea, whether it's a cultural idea, whether it's an economic idea, they try to impose on the non-Western countries, whether it's India, whether it's China, whether it's Afghanistan, whether it's Pakistan, whether it's Latin America, whether it's Africa, they try to impose their ideas whether it's a political, economically, on the non-Western country. And third wave, they're talking about the free trade, what we see, where they're talking about the free, trade, free flow of the uh, capital, free flow of the low trade barriers, and uh, current exchange of the uh, market, uh, currency exchange uh, to the market. So they're talking about, you see, these all somewhere led to the recolonization of the countries which are still struggling to become a part of the mainstream structure of the world system. So the Bandana Siva tried to questions on it and see uh, uh, questions uh, the whole uh, concept of the new liberal ideology. Then the another point what we are discussing on the tomorrow begins today. Here the uh, what the Japista movement led by the uh, uh, Marcos, he talked about you see, those who live and kill the people for power, for them there is no room for human beings. Second point, they say no space for hope, no place for tomorrow. Slavery or death is the choice that their world offers all world. Work is no longer necessary in order to produce wealth. Now all that is needed is a speculation. Now you see, you see, four point here Marcos trying to talking about, you see, as long as if you cannot counter the present new liberal ideology, you cannot have any kind of hope for the better world. Because see, in the present world, the people are living for just power and they kill the people just only for the power. And they say, you see, that therefore there is no space for hope. And they say, you see, this present world is hope only two things, either slavery or death because see everyone is trying to gain more and more power everyone is trying to gain more and more profit everyone is trying to get richer and richer so what it will lead to the it will lead to the more and more conflict when it will lead to the more and more conflict either you will have to surrender yourself before your others or you will have to struggle you will have to counter when you will have to counter then you will have to either kill others or you will kill yourself. So they say, you see, this present world is in such a catastrophe 
where it would not provide any kind of hope for the humanity. So it is a need of the time to first uh, uh, get over from this new liberal ideology where the financial supremacy has reduced the human value uh, under the market profit. So, and they say, you see, earlier there was people earned through the hard labor, but now people are earning uh, just through speculation like in the sensex, you just have to sit in, in, inside your house and speculate which mark, whether market will rise or whether market will fall. So it is not based, your earning would not based on any kind of hard labor, any kind of knowledge economy, it would based on your speculation. So the Marcos says, you see, the, the, these whole the new liberal ideology is based on complete speculations and whenever they speculate, uh, they, uh, they see either uh, they will earn or they will lose. And whenever they will lose, they will have a no place in, in the global economic system. Then the French alternatives, what I talked about, as all of us know, the, uh, this globalization is talking about rolling back of the state, free flow of the trade, minimum role of the state. But the French government believe in the state control. They, 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 they cherish their uh, identity, they cherish their culture, they cherish their values. So they don't want to integrate their culture with the uh, uh, global process. And they consider, see this globalization is basically Americanization. So they want to integrate that economy, but they don't, they don't want to assimilate or integrate their culture with the American culture because they consider their culture is more value based. So here the French alternatives talking about, you see, they, they, they don't believe in uh, giving the free hand to the market. They believe that there there's certain kind of state control must be exist across the uh, systems. And they say, you say, they value their la linguistic uh, differences. They value, they, they, they preserve their value. They, 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 uh, they feel their culture is superior. And they are also talking about, you see, uh, the concept of the globalization uh, that the idea that the uh, one size fits all. They also criticize this kind of role model. And so they counter all these things. Then the last point we talk about a, mad, a Mad Max scenario where what we have seen ever accelerating crisis in the capitalist economy, dramatically rising oil prices, increasing short supplies of oils would lead to warfare over the oil wells in oil producing countries, population growth, rising sea water, declining supplies of fresh water, nuclear exchange, and the detonations of suitcase bomb. This, they say, you see, the present world is leading across the society in such a situations where we cannot have any kind of hope. One side, the oil prices is increasing day by day. Another side, what we have been witnessing across the West Asia, there, there is a war is going on. Third side, what we are seeing in the present world also, in the 90s, what we see in the Bolivia, now in the South Africa, in the Cape Town, so there is a water crisis. Then across the Bangladesh the, the, uh, uh, and other countries, what we are witnessing due to the global warming, the sea level is rising. And when the sea level is rising, number of uh, uh, cities would submerge in the water. So they are telling us, see, a new situation has been emerging across the world. If we cannot, uh, having alternate, we will have to face a bigger, bigger problem. So they say, you see, we are not only criticizing about the globalization, but we, uh, they are telling that we have a also alternative principles. When they talk about alternative principles, they give, say, they want, they talk about the new democracy. Subsidiarity, ecological sustainability, common heritage, human rights, jobs, livelihood, employment, food security and food safety, equity, diversity, precautionary principles. Here this, they talk about, you see, if we work on this 10 principles like new democracy, subsidiarity, ecological sustainability, when they talked about the new dem democracy, they talked about, you see, equal participations of the people, whether they are poor or rich. When they talk about the subsidi subsidiarity, they are talking about, you see, certain things it requires subsidy, whether it's agriculture, whether it's a food. Then when they are talking about the ecological, subs subs uh, ecological uh, sustainability, they talk about, you see, as long as we cannot maintain the environment, there will be a threat uh, of the development. 
then they are talking about there are certain common heritage which we must cherish. Then they talk about the human rights, whether it's a Western people or Eastern people, we must respect the human rights of every individual. Then this talking about, you see, the livelihood, livelihood is the main issue. Employment across the world is increasing day, day by day. Then they're talking about the food security. Still, half of the people of the world is undernourished. Whether Africa, whether it's India, most of the people are living below the poverty line. Equity, as long as there would be no... <coughs> Uh, uh, equal uh, equity among the among the society there will be a conflict then they're talking about we must respect the diversity and they say you see precautionary principles means they're talking about when we talk about when we stress about the market market cannot uh, sort out the, all the problem so by trying and giving this kind of principle alternative relations is talking about you see we, they, we are not only criticizing but we have also alternative perspectives where we try to give the counter thesis of the new liberal ideology. Thank you. But this note, thank you, sir. Thank you so very much for giving us this session. Friends, uh, we will be back very soon and would we'll be discussing on another topic in our uh, forthcoming sessions. You are requested to write to us at info.cc at nic.in. With this note, we are taking your leave. Thank you. Thank you so very much. <music>